Okie dokie fellow FTO fanatics Here is going to be the video that you've been waiting to see I'm going to do a timing belt on the FTO GPX I'm also going to do a few other bits So I'm going to make this video in sections So that it kind of gives you a description and shows you how to go about doing this But to give you a rundown we're going to do the timing belt The water pump The timing belt pulley we're going to check the timing belt tensioner, we're going to change all the coolant pipes for silicon hoses and we're going to do the half moon seals on the car. You've seen my video previously if you've watched any of them about the track car's half moon seals. That was easy because the stuff was on a bench. This time the beast is in the garage and we're going to work on it in here. So stick with me, I'm going to start pulling a few things off the engine, give me a bit of access and then when we get into the gubbins of it I'll show you where we go from there. First part of the process is done, take an intake manifold off. For those of you that might not have done that before, it is easier than it looks. So essentially we start off by taking off the cam cover here, which is five screws, just a plastic cover. Uh, we disconnect the battery. We take off the air intake pipe that runs here. That's two Jubilee clips. And then we unplug all the sensors and unscrew the sensor body. So you've got the crank and the cam sensor here that are bolted into the intake manifold. My vex solenoids, all that sort of gubbins. We undo the map sensor connection and the earths at the back, which also has the throttle cable attached to it, which is just hanging down here. Uh, we undo the throttle body, take the four bolts out the throttle body and drop her down out the way after unplugging the throttle body sensor and then we take off the four bolts at the back of the intake manifold one of which is in the throttle body and then three of which are in the intake manifold then to take the intake manifold off we take the five bolts out and the two nuts we make sure that there's definitely no vacuum connections connected there's one by the throttle body there's one at the map sensor and there's the brake booster as well and then i think once that's all done intake manifold will pop off ah one more thing you got to unplug sorry is the variable intake runner control so that's three connections around the back of the intake manifold like so. Right, so now that we've got that done, we can take off all the coil packs and the lost coil packs, get them out of the way. But before we do anything more, the most important step is you cover up the intake manifold port. So we've got just a bit of black tape over that intake manifold port, make sure it's sealed down nicely. I don't want anything going in there, that would be a disaster, as you may or may not know at this point, yes. Okay, so a little bit of progress has been made. Uh, let's give you, sorry, a bit close to the camera there. Uh, let's give you an update where we are. First thing you're going to see is we've got no coil packs in here and no lost coil packs. If you're only doing the timing belt, I don't think you'd need to remove them. There's no reason I can think of why you have to take them out, but I've done that because I'm doing half moon seals. We've come around this side and we've got rid of the engine mount just in here. We've undone the crank pulley bolt, which is right down the bottom there. I'll, sh I'll get to that in a minute. And we've taken off the auxiliary belts and we're starting to strip things down. Now, one of the joys of doing an FTO timing belt is you've got really, really small amount of space to work in. This space here is, what, 10 centimetres wide, something like that. It's difficult to get in there to get the belt off, but not only that, you've got to remove everything to get in there. So, at the tip of my finger just now, you can see our new shiny alternator pulley bolt, or pulley itself. The, I suppose the first step is to get in there, loosen off the nut in the middle of the alternator pulley, loosen off the bolt, remove the belt. Now, you can't really see this from up here. Um, at the top of the alternator pulley, just at the tip of the pencil, there's a 12 millimeter bolt and there's a corresponding one a little bit lower down than that. There's another 12 millimeter bolt at the tip of the pencil here, which also holds the oil dipstick. And then there's a fourth one right down the bottom. The, the goal here is not to remove the pulley completely. You don't need to do that, but you do need to loosen the bolt enough that you can move the pulley up and down and out the way of the bolt heads whilst you undo them. You can take the pulley off if you want, but it's not necessary. So I start off by taking off the dipstick bolt first of all, pull the dipstick out, get it out of the way, it makes it easier to work with. I undo, obviously the engine mount is out of the way, the engine is on a jack at the moment but will be on an axle stand. This little connection at the tip of the pencil here is the power steering line. That is loosened but not removed. And I'm going to be doing the same with the one up the top. I'll be loosening it but not removing it. And then we're going to get in and we're going to remove this entire assembly here for the alternator tensioner and then we'll start removing all the covers. Now before we go any further the crank pulley bolt is right down the bottom here. Now you can see I've got the wheel off and I've got all the arch liners off so I've got loads of space in here guys to be able to see what I'm doing. The crank pulley bolt obviously is a pretty tough beast and anyone who's worked on cars will know that these things are not fun. I've got lucky here and this one has come undone just with the power of my impact driver, my impact socket. 
so I've pulled it off but what you can see here are two holes in the crank pulley if you can't just unremove this by hand this is just finger tight now what you need to do is get a tool of some sort you can buy the Mitsubishi one if you're here in the UK you can speak to Viomoto and they can sell you a tool which will fit into here and that will allow you to lock this and hold this pulley whilst you undo the bolt now I've left the bolt in because what I want to do is make sure that I get all the timing marks correct before I get really deep into it but before we do that I will be having the pulley off so that I can actually see what's going on behind it and then I'll get all the timing marks lined up. The pulley itself has got what's called a woodruff key which locks it into the crank gear itself so it's easy to turn the engine over by hand if you're just using the crank pulley itself. Point I'm going to get in there, I'll remove the alternator bracketry and I'll start removing the plastic covers and yeah we're really getting somewhere then. We've got the belt exposed so yes we've got all the covers off the belt and we've got the timing marks lined up. Now what you can see there are little tiny pink dots. I actually use nail polish because it stays on there and it's great and the pink doesn't suit me. So, you know, it's resigned to working in the garage. Basically we take off all the, the top covers and the center cover and then you've got to remove the alternator bracket belt, which as I said, you don't need to remove the pulley. It does make it easier, but you know, you can move things around here to get in and out the bolts. Bear in mind here, you've got three different bolts along the side and one on the top, and then you've got to remove the alternator itself. So if I get under here, we have got the crank pulley exposed, sorry, the crank gear exposed. All I did to turn the engine over is put the pulley back on, and that then allowed me to turn it by hand. The timing mark there is lined up with the mark on the case. You're not gonna be able to see that's really difficult, but check the manual for that. You see, I've just got the alternator hanging by its top bolt. I've just loosened that off, and we are ready to remove the belt. So I'm gonna call it a day today, because I'm not rushing this job. I'm taking my time, there's no time limit on it. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow, I'll pull the tensioner off, we'll take the belt off, and then we'll start thinking about getting in the top here. Day two. Where are we then? Well, today we've come up and I've started by draining the radiator. That's going to have to be done because I'm doing the water pump, so we might as well do that whilst we're doing anything else. We've taken the belt off today, so the belt is on the floor. Big scary moment. We've got all our marks on the belt, so if I just show you down here, I've got timing mark, timing mark, timing mark, timing mark, timing mark, and timing mark. So you've obviously got left bank, right bank, or whichever way around you want to talk about it, back bank, front bank, right bank, left bank, whatever way and crank down here. These are going to be transferred onto the new belt and then when the new belt goes back on I'll be using those timing marks as well as the ones on the car to actually line the thing up. Half moon seals though. So we've got in here and we've undone both the cam covers. I'm leaving the back one covered right now. I don't need that undone until I start doing half moon seals at that one but it's loose. I'm not going to open it up because I don't want to drop anything in there whilst I'm working on the front bank. So the front bank is left apart. I've taken off the Myvex solenoid connection so that it's loose. And then to remove the top cam girdle, I want to call it, um, you undo the bolts from the middle outwards. So I started in the centre here, worked my way out, slowly but surely, until you've got them all loose. Now you'll notice those bolts are quite long. You do not need to remove these inner bolts on the end can caps, okay? Those bolts there, I know I've loosened that one slightly, they're much shorter bolts, and they're holding the cap down onto the girdle. Likewise, all these centre bolts here, they don't need to be removed either. So we're about ready to pull this off. This is actually loose. I'm going to pull that off, clean off the surface and put a new gasket in there. So I'll be back once I've started that, guys. Okay, so after removal of the top half of the engine, you're going to end up with what looks like this. Now, the whole principle of this form in place gasket that, fo that seals these, this is where the half moon seals are on the head, I'll show you that in a minute, is that this surface is completely clean and free from any debris. So as you can see, I've already given it a pre-clean just removed any of the last bits of gasket that were left on here. I will now give this a very, very light rub with a bit of scotch bright to get any remnants of any sort of silk and sort of varnish off. And then I'm going to give it a wipe down with acetone so it's spotlessly clean. And then I'm going to do the same with the head which is on the bench. I'll go over there right now and I'll show you that. What you then end up with is your head upside down on the bench like so. And I've already been cleaning this one. But the channel we're going to be playing with is this one here on the outside of the head. Okay, so the form gasket is going to be put in there in a 3mm bead all the way around this edge. Now as you can see here, we've got some oil passageways. We have to be very careful not to overfill this groove because we don't want to block the oil passageway. It's going to be game over if that happens. And this surface here has to be spotlessly clean before you apply the gasket. The half moon seal looks a little bit like this. This is the old one. As you can see, this has got a lot of warping going on with it. It's squished down. 
and the reason you get the leak is because this flat surface becomes not so flat anymore and will start to then seep oil out and you can see how much squashed the old one is compared to the new one now he's going to go somewhere in here and there is an offset to this so you've got to be a little bit careful how you pop them in but long story short it's going to go in something like that we'll push them down flush but we're going to put the gasket in first um, another point to note is these are your collets now these plastic caps are what breaks and causes the hideous tapping in the GPX engine. It's a good time to have a look at these and change them if any of them look like they're in bad nick. Luckily with this engine, they look okay. So I'm going to get on, I'll start cleaning things up. I'm going to put the form in place gasket on and then we'll pop all this back in the car and we'll do all the same stuff for the rear bank. So as if by magic we've got the front bank on and the rear bank open. Uh, there is the innards of the rear bank including the form in place gasket. I've left it on here so you can see what it looks like when you take the, the cam girdle off. You can see that it's peeling away actually from the surface of the head already and it's beginning to weep. So yep, yeah, we've got everything exposed, we've got this, this head off. Interesting point to note here is this rear bank seems to get better oil supply to the head. Both of them are pretty crap but that's a bit nicer. Um, okay, so as I said, there's the front head on. Just to give you a little sneak peek, uh, if I poke the camera in here, you can see the half moon seals that I've installed. A lovely smothering of the Worth um, Silicon Special Paste uh, to make sure the seal is good. I've not wiped down the side of the head yet, but I will do so that I know if I get any leaks in the future. I will show you now what the cam girdle looks like as soon as you take it off. So here we go. Nice and filthy, lots of oil on it. Half moon seals on the right hand side here next to the cam gears. There is your collets on this one again. Let's have a quick check and it all look fairly good. Pretty lucky here. We actually thought we might have lost a couple of these, but we've not. So yeah, we're happy. Uh, once again, there's your ceiling groove. This time, we'll have to go ahead and we'll clean this up. This is as it came off the car. And then we'll apply our special silicon in there and get it all sealed. Okay, so we're getting on pretty good. It's about mid-afternoon now on day two of the ah, mammoth task that is half moon seals and timing belt swap let's show you where we are yes things have come on greatly we've got both heads back together again we've got all the cam cover bolts tapped down to 24 newton meters we've got the intake manifold on again i thought i'd get that straight on because we don't want to drop anything down into the engine so it's a nice safe bet to get that all bolted up we're starting to put a few more electric plugs on and we've got a new idler pulley bearing and our new tensioner bearing just hiding away down there so at this point I'm going to pull out the water pump, I'm going to take off the tensioner, I'm going to compress the tensioner on a vice as per the manual, stick a pin in them, and then we're going to start putting the timing belt back on. So, once we get the timing belt back to the point where we're starting to put it on, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks for doing that. At the moment, we're going to drain the cooling system completely. I've got all the water out of the radiator, but we need to take the water pump off and that will piss coolant everywhere. And then yeah, let's see where we get from there. Okay, so we're a lot further on down the process here we've just replaced the water pump now in the manual obviously the timing belt is a separate operation to the water pump but if you're doing the timing belt you may as well do the water pump as you can see it is buried right down in the engine bay if i can get a bit of light on it and i want to actually see if i can show you one of the problems with doing a water pump in an fto so water pump is down here it has as you can see one two three four bolts at the top there's one just at the tip of my finger underneath it there there's one right underneath the pulley and then handily there's one right at the tip of my finger which is behind the bracketry that holds the power steering pump on so yes let me swear here it is a motherfucker right in all intents and purposes mitsubishi designed this engine to be taken out for anything like this to be changed so the problem you've got is you've got to remove the bracketry that holds on the engine mount the power steering pump and it's a bit of a nightmare so let me give you a rundown of what you need to do essentially here from underneath the car underneath here you can see one two three bolts visible there's a fourth bolt tucked in here that you need to undo when you remove the power steering pump power steering pump itself is hiding the fifth bolt which is whereabouts are we here you should just be able to see it on the camera through the hole of the power steering pump there there's one more bolt hidden away and to remove the power steering pump there are two bolts on this side that you can should be able to view fairly well there so you go through the power steering pulley itself to get those two you've got to have the radiator out really to do this unless you've got tiny little hands and amazing tools there are actually two bolts one in at the tip of my finger here and one in my tip of my finger just underneath this plate which hold the bracket onto the engine block 
The power steering pump last bolt, get that light a bit better, is this one down here. So to remove the power steering pump, you move this bolt and the two bolts behind the pulley and the whole pump will move forwards. You then take off the two bolts from the bracket, or you do that before, and the other four which I've just shown you. And what you're able to then do is pull that bracket forward so it'll expose the head on the bolt which is absolutely completely hidden underneath here. So then you've got seven bolts which are holding your water pump on. Pull it off, stick a new pump on, swear a few times, curse Mitsubishi for the stupid design, and then start putting it back together. So I'm going to have a clean up here now, and then I'm going to start putting the timing belt back on. That's the fun stuff that we want to make sure we get absolutely correct. I'm going to have to get the timing marks bang on. I'll show you how I'm going to achieve that in just a few minutes. Okay, so the bit you've all been waiting for, how the hell do you get this belt on? Well, basically, not without a bit of effort. What you can see here are bulldog clips on the cam belt. They are crucial, and I'll explain why in a sec. You've got one around the corner there, a couple on that cam, and one on each cam on the right-hand bank. The reason you have them on there is to allow you to manipulate the belt all the way around. Now, this left bank I'm pointing to here is particularly twitchy. Where the cam timing marks are, the cams are sat right on the peak of a lobe. So once you get them to that point, if you breathe on them and you move them too quick, they're going to ping about 45 degrees out of the way and you're going to have a real struggle getting a belt on. You want to use a tool to manipulate the cams so you're not doing it by hand. You can do it by hand, but it's an effort and it's difficult to grip. So I've actually used a plumber's wrench with a bit of tape wrapped around the teeth so that I can actually turn the cams um, and manipulate them easily without too much stress. There's a plumber's wrench there. I've protected the teeth so that they don't dent the cams. That then allows you to work your way around. So you start around here, get your cam timing mark on, get your belt engaged with all those teeth and get the bulldog clip where I'm pointing to there. The reason the bulldog clip has to be that far around is it gives you the torque allowed to stop the cam from moving. Move to the right one, do the same thing with the right. Couple of bulldog clips on that one just for sure. Round the idler pulley, make sure it goes below the idler pulley obviously, and then up and over the other two cams. That's a bit easier that side. The front bank or the left bank actually doesn't sit at the same point in the cam lobe, so it's a bit more forgiving when you get the belt on. Again though, put your bulldog clips on the sides, make sure that the belt is tight around the teeth and you shouldn't have too much trouble getting it to stay where it's where it's put. Once you then got the four cams done, you can run underneath the idler pulley and the cams, making sure this is a crank sensor, sorry, the cam sensor you see here, that's got to come through the belt. It then goes over the water pump, down towards the crank pulley, up around the tensioner, and you're getting somewhere. You know you're getting not too far away. At this point, you really want to make sure that your timing marks line up. So you can see there I've got a bit of pink nail polish, it's good stuff. Makes the colour nice, that's what I mentioned earlier on. It's nice and clear. So we take a mark from each of the timing marks on the four camshafts, and then I actually made two marks on the crank pulley down the bottom. As I said, they're just for reference so you can transfer it onto the other belt. It should have your timing marks on it if you've done that properly. Use Tipex, use nail polish, use dog shit, doesn't matter. Just get your timing points transferred from the old belt to the new belt. If you transfer those marks onto your old belt, it's going to make it a whole lot easier to put this belt on. You've got no doubt in your mind then that the belt you're putting onto this car is in exactly the same position that the belt that came off the car. So what we're going to do now, we're going to tension up the belt. We're then going to turn it over by hand two or three times to make sure these timing marks line up. And then you're going to leave it and let the automatic tensioner do its job. It's got to be a minimum of five minutes you've got to leave it for. I'm going to leave it longer than that. Right then, so we leap forward many, many steps and we have a completed engine again. Before I talk about final reassembly, let's have a little talk about timing belt tension. Timing belt tension on these cars is as critical as with any other car. Make the timing belt too tight and it's going to put premature wear on pulleys and the gears and the cams and blah, blah, blah. Make it too loose and you've got it risking skipping a tooth. Neither situation is preferable and thankfully the Mitsubishi, they give you some clear instructions on how to do it, but it's not exactly simple. Any of you that have done this before will know where I'm coming from, but what we're aiming for is for the pin that locks the timing belt tensioner piston to come out easily when the tension is correct. Uh, let me show you what I used. I used a rather large safety pin for this operation and I'll just pop it down here and I'll give you a little view of it. So that is the safety pin there. That is inserted into the timing belt tensioner uh, whilst you assemble the car. So you pop that in the tensioner once you've compressed the tensioner on a vise. 
uh, you bolt that onto the car and then what you're supposed to then do is use the special time and belt tensioning tool to rotate the pulley so if you're the guys looking at the tensioner pulley this is the side of the engine the pulley itself wants to move up and towards the timing belt and then you have to tighten the bolt that holds the pulley so that it can't rotate again uh, once you've got that tension you then turn the engine over a couple of times by hand and leave it and the reason you leave it is to allow the piston to do its job of moving out slightly towards the, the lever that's attached to the pulley if all is going correct you should have a gap between the end of the piston body and the lever so you're about to see the piston in there of I think the tolerance is three and a half to five and a half mil now I did this the first time without the tensioner pulley tool um, and I was trying to use some other ways of doing it and I had a gap of 11 mil so it's not right it has to come back off you've got to recompress the tensioner you've got to make sure you clip your belt back onto the the cams because the minute you take that tensioner off it's going to want to ping off the cams and now you then start the process again so one of the problems I found is finding a tool that you can manipulate the tensioner sort of tool with that doesn't get in the way of your torque wrench when you're torquing up the bolt. So let me show you what I managed to devise. I had a bit of a brainstorm and I don't have a torque wrench that can do a three newton meter torque value. So I figured, well, that's basically hand tight. How can I do that? That is how I did that. So here's your tensioner timing belt tensioner tool this is quarter inch drive in here and this is basically a little I don't know what you call that a little chuck with quarter inch drive hole in it and a couple of little pins that stick out they are not fucking long enough man you know okay they could do with being another five mil long those little tangs because I tell you what this wants to slip out like nobody's business this is a screwdriver handle from a very cheap what would you call it screwdriver bit set uh, and all I've done with this is I've cut the end off it a little bit and I've ground down the little fillets I don't know if you can make that out I don't think you can let me pop them down in the bench so you can get a focus on that there's some little fillets that create a rounded lip at the edge here I wanted to grind them down so this then sits in this little tool so you can see there it sits nice and flush with the tool and this then allows you to manipulate that tensioner in that direction and hold it there whilst you then do up the bolt that's here so once you've got that and you're comfortable with the gap as I said if it's no good take it off and do it again don't chance this okay it's got to be perfect once you've got that three and a half to five and a half mil gap you should find that that pin just slots out of the timing belt tensioner there was no force on it it was really easy to remove then you can smile leave it let it sit again don't rush this job, take your time with it. And when you're happy, turn the engine over again. Turn it over two times. And then leave it. And then come back to it and turn it over another three times. Okay, now if you've used the technique that I've used with the dots on the belt, once you've turned it over a few times, those dots will begin to migrate away from where they originally were. That's the nature of the way that the gears work. Eventually they will come back into line, but I don't know how many rotations I'd have to do to achieve that, probably hundreds. After that point, you start putting all back together again so you want to put the bottom timing cover on the big plastic one that goes over where the crank pulley is make sure your crank sensor's back in work your way up the engine from there so you then want to put on your alternator pulley bracket um, all the bolts that attach that the engine hanging bracket the alternator tensioner itself the new belts the crank pulley which is a bit of a beast to tighten up because it's about 180 newton meters i think you've got to tighten that one up to and then you start assembling all the top of the engine so you'll make sure you put your covers back on if you've done what i've done you put new coolant pipes in the car let's just give you a little a juicy look at them these are two new silicon hoses here and then you probably won't be able to make this out because it's a bit dark in here but there's a couple more down there that we've changed as well you tighten up your throttle cable to make sure it's got nice tension on it do up all your engine mount get inside the car and turn the key and pray that it doesn't go bang now that prayer can be a little bit less if you've done your checks and you've tested things properly as i said turn that engine over as many times as you feel comfortable that those timing marks are not moving and that everything is working right Obviously when you start the car, your initial answer, your initial worry is belt whine or growling noises from the bearings. That would indicate you've got the belt too tight, which you shouldn't have done if you followed the instructions on the tensioner. And then 
Your only other worry apart from that is oil leaks from where you might have sealed the cylinder head if you've done half moon seals like I have. Now, I've not done this yet, but I'm going to get in there, I'm going to clean up all the block so that it gives me a lovely, you know, fresh surface for me to look at should I see any uh, any weeping or any crap coming out the engine heads. I think we're good though. Um, she does run. I've got a very small clip of that that I took on my phone. I will insert here. Happy days guys. That is your timing belt tensioner, your timing belt, your water pump, your half moon seals are done, which you've seen in a video before, coolant pipes. We've got a few more bits to do before we take this beast on the track. It's been a bit of a slog, but I've taken my time. I've been filming this for you guys and I want to make sure that I, uh, I've never done this in the car before, so I wanted to make sure I did the best job I could. She runs like a dream guys, absolutely perfect. We'll take her out on the road next after we've changed a few more bits and see how she performs. But yeah, happy days. Good luck. If you've got any questions, stick them down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Sweet. Pay more out.